And when, you know, you first start off real estate, everybody tells you to call your sphere of influence. And I didn't have a sphere of influence, so I had to make one. Hello and welcome to episode 176 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by Rhode Island-based real estate broker, Meg Hayden. Launching her real estate career in a brand new market with no sphere of influence and her first child on the way, Meg was determined to find success. Turning to a more boots on the ground approach, she began making a name for herself. From door knocking, cold calling for sale by owners, and holding as many open houses as possible, Meg was determined to connect with as many people as she could. Throughout our conversation, Meg shares her strategy for door knocking, tips for generating more leads at open houses, and touched on how real estate has given her the opportunity to be more present in her young children's lives. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, the all new Smart Agents Magazine has launched and is full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you will find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Subscribe now to receive your copy of the printed magazine each month and instantly get access to our online agent community and members only templates. Click the link in the episode description or go to smartagents.com forward slash magazine. Also, if you enjoy this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and of course, YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to today's featured interview with Meg Hayden. If you're interested in following her, I've included a link to her Instagram page in the episode description. Really, the way I like to start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit, who you are and uh, where you're at. All right. I am Meg Hayden. I am a real estate broker uh, licensed in Rhode Island, uh, Massachusetts, and I am also um, applying for my broker's license in New Jersey, but I do have my sales um, license down there. I am a mom of two, and I currently live in Rhode Island at the beach, loving that, uh, but full-time agent. And, um, you know, something you had mentioned was I am getting my uh, contractor's registration as well. Um, So I really... I'm just super appreciative for real estate in general, really opened up um, every single door for me. And um, for that, I'm like super appreciative. So so yeah, a little bit about me. Yeah. Well, so kind of take me back to the beginning of your real estate interest. How did that, uh, how did that come about and how did you first get interested in the industry? Well, Um, so I lived in, I'm originally from New Jersey and I lived in Philly for about five years. And, um, on the weekends when I would go out to, uh, the grocery store, I would, you know, pop by some open houses just to check them out and kind of see just the different value of properties and, you know, the different finishes. And, and I always just remember like walking into open houses and agents just saying, hi, sign in. Let me know if you have any questions. And um, so, so yeah, I was like, well, I could definitely do this better. But um, anyway, so then when I moved to Rhode Island, I was looking for jobs. I was pregnant. And, um, you know, my uh, my partner had said, you know, it'd be a good idea to just maybe look into real estate. So I got my license, um, seven months pregnant. And I had moved to Rhode Island. I knew nobody, like not a single person within a two hour radius. And, you know, if you're in real estate, it's like, for me, it's an hour radius. <laughs> if I'm driving <laughs> anywhere, I've done more when I first started off for sure. But like, that was, you know, that's sort of your cutoff. But um, anyway, so I, yeah, so I knew nobody, nobody, no one. Um, and when, you know, you first start off real estate, everybody tells you to call your sphere of influence. And I didn't have a sphere of influence, so I had to make one. Um, so I started door knocking, um, seven months pregnant. And I would say, hi, my name is Meg. I'm your local real estate agent. I'm like, how long have you lived here? And people love to talk about their houses and you know their spaces. And 
Um, and even if they weren't ready to sell, I would just ask them if they knew anybody in the neighborhood who was interested in selling or looking to sell. And so they'd be like, oh, yeah, like Sally down the street, you know, she might be the person. So you go to Sally's house, knock on the door. Um, and so that's how I really started um, my real estate career. And then the other way was I also did a lot of like for sale by owners. I would hit the phones because um, it was just the easiest way to kind of get your pitch down and be rejected a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but I always say like, you know, for a phone call, I'm like, nobody even knows who you are, what you look like, just you got to get over yourself, you know, and, and there's, there's gotta be one person out of the many that you call that day that might be interested. And so, so yeah, so I would do, um, for sale, like Fizbo's, um, and that's, that's really how I started my real estate career. Right. And, and when was that? Um, about six years ago now, mm -hmm. awesome. six years ago now. And so, um, you know, I, th I think, um, I think a lot of, uh, agents get caught in that, like, what am I supposed to do? And the fact of the matter is like, do any activity, you know, in real estate, whatever it is, making calls, going to local businesses, even doing like a market update, um, just giving yourself something to talking to talk about. So, you know, if I would also do a ton of open houses, that's where you get a ton of business. Um, you don't just say, hi, take a look around you say, hi. Where are you guys coming from? How long have you been looking? Da, 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 da. Like, what's your story? You know, and th that's how you would get buyers and sellers. Um, so I definitely worked a lot of open houses as well. Um, it's a great way to get business, to just even start talking about real estate. And then what I would always do as well is um, uh, whenever I had an open house, I would go and door knock 100 doors before the open house just to get business that way and interest that way. And actually one of the houses that I sold um, in September, October last year, the buyer was from a door knock. Oh, well, wow. yeah, it's awesome. It's great. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so there's a couple of things I want to, I definitely want to touch on. I want to come back to the, uh, the open houses and, you know, doing those, uh, but, you know, just starting out, you know, moving somewhere where you have no sphere and you have really no, uh, kind of built in people to start contacting, to, kind of launch your real estate career, looking back, do you think that helped, you know, kind of push you a little bit further into your market and get you out there more? Yeah, I really had no choice, you know, and um, at the time there were really not a lot of jobs and no one was also calling me back. <laughs> so I was like, okay, like baby on the way, you know, we really got to make this work. So I really like, um, I really don't care. Like I don't have any, um, I just, I just, you had to put yourself out there, you know? So if pe there's going to be people that are going to like you and there's going to be people that aren't going to like you and in real estate, it's a numbers game. And I always say like, as just be as authentic as you can. So do the things that you like to do. So even when I was um, pregnant, I joined these mommy groups too, just because I'm like, I'm a new mom. I don't, you know, I don't know anybody, but that was also an amazing way to connect with other women and women by houses, you know? And so, um, that was also a really great way to um, connect with people. But yeah, I really had to go um, balls to the walls because it, you know, it's, I always say like, no one's, no one's going to give you leads. No one's going to save you. No one's going to start your business. You have to do it and you have to be the biggest marketer for yourself. Like, I mean, if you tell me how many agents, you know, are going to say that they're, oh, their parents, you know, they got so many referrals from their families and friends, not, not off the bat, you know? So, you know, you have to, you have to do it. You have to do the work. You have to put in the work um, and whatever that is. So, you know, obviously everyone says be cons consistent. I am like super ADD. So my consistency is like, you know, but I'm always out there like talking about real estate, doing real estate. And then I started doing a lot of videos as well, uh, video content. And so that was really good to be able to get my name out there too. Um, and just be, again, your authentic self. Um, so, yeah. Right. And so with, you know, with the door knocking, what was your kind of approach that you would make to people that, you know, hadn't seen you before or, uh, you know, you were brand new. So maybe you didn't have the, the book of business behind yourself. Yeah. So I would just, I mean, you basically go off of like, I think um, for me, it was, I did start on a team. So that was super mm -hmm. helpful to kind of get 
you know, just get next to people who are doing the work and, um, and just learn very quickly. So that I would definitely, if you're a new agent, I think joining a team is super important and not don't join a team because of leads because you're not necessarily going to get them um, or the best ones or whatever, but it's just about really like being next to people who are doing the things that you want to do. And that's really like in life in general, you know what I mean? It's putting yourself around people that are doing something more than you that are doing something better than you, whether it's investing in real estate, whether it's, you know, momming, whatever, that that's something that's super important in life in all aspects. Um, so yeah, I started, I definitely started on a team, which was very helpful. Didn't last on the team for that long. Cause I'm very high D high I, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but it was, it was definitely beneficial, uh, for sure. And then with the door knocking. So what I would do is, and you know, if you're a new agent, I would totally recommend just putting out there like, Hey, you know, I'll cover your open house. I'll, um, and that could be like, I always do it even across um, brokerages. Some people are not comfortable with that, some brokers, but some are. And um, and even just saying like, you know, I'll do a, um, an inspection, I'll cover this, I'll cover that, just to like really start to learn about um, selling a home and like what can happen and all the things that come in into play when you're like in that transaction part, not just getting the listing. But when I did go to open house or when I did door knock, I would just, um, if I were door knocking new, I would just say, hi, my name is Meg Hayden. I'm your local realtor. Um, I just wanted to know if like, you know, you knew anybody who was interested in buying or selling and they would say no, or actually I think I started off with, Oh, how long have you lived here? You know? And then depending on the amount of time and they just, people just talk, you know, they love talking about their house. Um, and then, and then you just ask them like, if you, you know, if you know anyone who's looking to sell or if you guys are looking to do that in the next year or whatever. Um, and that's pretty much it because there's not a lot of people that are door knocking, like coming to your door. Best door knocking advice too, is to go to the houses where the cars are because there's people there. (laughs) So that's a good way to start. Um, Um, So that's what I would typically do. And then the other great way was with the open houses to door knock, just say, hey, I'm a local real estate broker. I just wanted to let you know that we have an open house coming up on Saturday from one to two, Sunday from one to two, if you wanted to stop by, just wanted to let you know, this is how much the house is, you know, being sold for. And, um, you know, if you have any interest and you know what, let me get your email address. Um, if you wanted to know how much the house actually closes for, uh, so you can get a better idea as to like how much your house is worth. Um, so that would always be a good way to just get people's information, um, get them in the system and then also have an opportunity to follow up after the sale. Right. And then you also, you mentioned, um, you know, volunteering to hold open houses for other agents and other brokerage. And I think that's a really great way to really use open houses as that lead generation source, not necessarily, you know, selling that home, but it, I think the majority of your time is really cultivating relationships with people that will, will not buy the house that you are currently standing in. Dude, it's a pop-up shop, yeah. right? You're like you got, you have a pop-up shop for people who are coming and interested in buying or selling real estate. So like you should be there, you know, and even if it's just to um, help, help an agent out, if they have a, a big, you know, if, if they need help, any agent that you know, that's like doing a lot of business, just reach out to them and say, Hey, listen, I'd love to like come and help you out with an open house, what have you to just get started and talking about real estate. Um, but I, I really love, like, I'm a people person. So I really like doing that like one-on-one. Um, and I think it's just way easier to get business that way. If you're showing up, you know, as an, at your open houses, but it's not about just showing up at the open houses. It's really about like what you're doing there and being like active and action and present and talking versus just being shy, you know, just learn about the people. What are they interested in? Where are they looking? How long have they been looking for? I'm the offers that they put in, like whatever it is, um, that that's something that's super important as well is to just really kind of uncover what people are looking for. Right. So when somebody, you know, in an open house that you're holding, uh, when somebody walks in, do you kind of have that mental checklist of questions that you want to uh, kind of answer or get answered through, you know, the course of a conversation so that you have a better uh, picture of them and then also maybe even just the client base around there? 
yeah, I mean, uh, I always like I'm I'm ridiculous. I'm like, welcome <laughs> to <your> new home. <laughs> and I'm like, well, maybe, hopefully. And then I just ask them where they're coming from, so I kind of see where their location is, you know, where their where their location is, and what they're looking for, you know. And I just ask them up front because you know, they're obviously looking to buy real estate. So it's just super important to kind of get to the, you know, just be like, how long have you been looking? What are you guys looking for? Where do you work? Do you want to be close to your work? Um, you know, if they have kids, like what their school system, where they are in their school system. Um, so those are just like the kinds of questions that are important. And then, and then it's about like executing, getting their information and then following up with them, you know, Hey, thanks for coming to the open house. Really appreciate it. Just wanted to follow up. Um, and see like where you are in your home buying process. Have you guys been approved yet? Um, and then get them that through that approval process. But something else that, that's really important um, that I definitely learned was, you know, I had started a team and you take new team members on and um, and sometimes they're a big burden essentially because it's like a new, new agent um, and you're just it's kind of a time suck. And so um, a good way as somebody who's trying to build a team um, or, you know, broker an office is to give people those opportunities to say like, hey, does that somebody want to cover my open house? And then you're able to kind of they're able to like present how they would present to the, um, you know, at the open house. So that's a really good way to like just interview people and kind of like weed people out um, and see if they're going to be a good fit for your team. So that's something. And I just, I think it's like, and I just do it on Facebook. I'll be like, Hey, does somebody want to cover, like come to my open house? Does somebody want to cover, you know, a home inspection? Can somebody cover this? Um, And it just allows you to kind of be able to start like, you know, building your team in maybe different areas and different locations. And then also, you know, um, I don't know, just, it's just like an interview process, a quicker, easier interview process. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even as you know, it just, using a, an example of ours, you know, not too long ago, we hired another uh, graphics designer and you, you send test tasks and that's basically, you know, Hey, come in, show me what you can do. And that's a great way to uh, kind of see how somebody works in a real world uh, environment. Right. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. So one last question I want to ask you about kind of your, uh, this lead generation side of things is uh, the calling on the FIS- the calling the FISBOs. And mm-hmm. what was your kind of approach uh, for them? And what were you offering uh, them to kind of uh, get them to open up to you and talk to you and eventually, you know, hopefully give you uh, their business? So I always start off, I'm like, hey, my name is Meg Hayden. I'm like, what am I, the 50th agent that's called you? And so they laugh at me and they're like, yeah. <laughs> and I think um, a common mistake that agents make when they call FISBOs is some people, and there's some scripts out there that will be like, oh, I have a buyer, you know? And for me, I just feel like in life and in business, honesty is and trust are the most important um, foundations of any relationship. So if you are lying to your client, you know, I just feel like, I don't know, this is not how I um, have ever run my business and will ever run my business. So I just, I just start off with saying like, what am I the, you know, the 50th agent that's called you, they laugh. And then, um, you know, and then I asked them like where they're moving and why they're selling. And um, and at the end of the day, like it's just really important for people to know the numbers. And so every client that I have gets a net sheet. So if and I do it like in a range. So like, let's say they want to list their house for um, like five hundred thousand dollars. So I'll do a range. And I'll say, okay, if we get it under contract for four seventy five up to five twenty five, this is how much you're going to net. So I go all the way down. We, you know, subtract out the taxes that they're going to have to pay the state, the attorneys' fees, the um, brokerage services, and uh, you know, and then whatever else is included in that. Um, and then you know, you and then you just let them know, like you know, subtract your mortgage if you have a mortgage. I think people really just want to know their numbers at the end of the day. And so if if you can show people the numbers that they're going to walk away with, I think they feel more comfortable doing that. But I don't know. I just, I just talk to them like normal people, you know, like, let me come and check it out. There's, you know, I'm 
like, you know, totally honest and I'm not going to like, you know, harass you or anything like that. But I just, I just go in with the numbers as well. And then out of those calls, I think it's also important to try to get, um, you know, see if there's, if they're buying in, in a location. So that would allow you to kind of help um, guide them in that way. So you could get a buyer agency out of that. And then the other thing I actually talk about is seller financing. Cause I think at the end of the day, education is the most important part of real estate. That is our whole entire job. It's educating people about, you know, um, the, the process, what, like, you know, whether or not we should even like buy this home. Like sometimes I'm like, let's get out of here. This isn't even worth it. I'm not doing this. Like <laughs> this is crack. That's crack. This is like a money thing, you know, we're not doing this. Um, so yeah, I talk about seller financing. So for those of you who are, you know, new to real estate and don't know about seller financing, I myself just found out a couple of years ago, I was looking to buy a house in Vermont and, um, as like an Airbnb. And I found this house as a FISBO. And we were looking at houses that were like closer, like 350, 400, where I felt comfortable. But then uh, I found this house, it was like $700,000. And it was like, amazing. And so I, you know, of course, I'm like, call the call the, um, the seller to see what the deal is. And he had offered something like seller financing. So I had asked him what seller financing was, or I had asked him like, you know, what, what he was offering for seller financing. So for $700,000, he was going to give, I needed a hundred thousand dollars to put down and he was going to charge me five and a half percent. Now for a second home at the time, um, I think it was like 9%. So I'm like, okay, Literally, like this could actually make sense just based on the location, the size of the house um, that it will be able to I know it will be able to make at least fifty thousand dollars each year, even after paying for everything, all the expenses. And he was like, you know, I'll do it for like 20 years, 25 years, you know, 30 years, however long you want. And I remember my mom saying, like, how's he going to do 25 years? He's 85 years old. And I was laughing because I was like, I, I mean, that's a great question. And so, you know, he was just like, no, my kids will continue to get paid for the next 25 years, you know, even after I die. So, you know, that really like triggered something for me to have to educate people about seller financing, because a lot of people don't know seller financing. It's like, instead of it being Bank of America, it should be Meg Hayden, it's the bank, you know, and at the end of the day, you get your get 20 percent. And there's a lot of loan officers that will pre-approve people because they're hoping to get the refi on the other side. So um, so I just, you know, I, I I'll ask people if they've um, you know, if they own the home outright on the call, um, if they do. Great. I talk about seller financing. Some people don't want that option, uh, but some others find it interesting. It's something they never thought about. And even if they don't, if they still have a mortgage, I say, well, listen, in the future, when you guys are old and you're retired and maybe you have multiple properties, this is a great way to continue to get like five and a half percent off of your money. So when my mom sold her house too, I'm like, what do you like, what are you going to do with $800,000 in the bank? You know? Right. Right. Absolutely. At the end of the day, if you look at it, it's like when you go to sign a mortgage, right? And you're at the closing table, $800,000. Let's say you're, that's the loan amount, $800,000. You're going to end up over those 25 years, you're going to end up spending double, pretty much $1.6 million. So like, how else are you going to make that in like 25 years off, of, you know, off of real estate? It's amazing. Right. Absolutely. And I think, you know, just by presenting those, uh, those net numbers, it also helps with those people that do still have the mortgage. Uh, you kind of see, you know, hey, if I keep hanging on to this myself and try to sell this, how many more months of my mortgage do I really want to pay before it starts to really eat away at that net gain? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And just, you know, show that you're the expert and all the things that you do on the back end. And, um, you know, something I found as well is I do um, a lot of uh, reverse prospecting. So um, I forget, there's a book I read. It was called, I think it was like conversion something, the conversion formula. I don't know. But this guy, he has all these um, like 
classes online, like these master classes, right? So he doesn't even use social media at all. And he finds that, I mean, a lot of people find that email marketing is really a more direct, you know, from (laughs) this action to like action in terms of like purchasing an item. Um, And so what I do is I always, I have, I've already established like um, a list of agents uh, in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, um, and even in New Jersey on, um, so I have a master list. So I just send out like coming soon, you know, open house, just listed, what have you. And so those are the things that you want to tell um, your clients. It's like, listen, I'm not just putting it on MLS hoping and pray mm-hmm. like we're doing a lot behind the scenes as well as well as doing email like email marketing and social media um and really just about getting the property in front of people as many times as possible you know i even talk about coming soon i don't know if you guys have that where you are but coming soon you know you're like have you heard about coming soon and they're like no you're like well this is an extra like marketing point where we get to tell everyone hey like this is coming soon so your house doesn't even need to be like ready you know, you can still have time to get it ready for photos and everything. And we have up to a month, but it offers us just one more, you know, one more marketing point um, to be able to shoot out to everybody. Right. Absolutely. So, and I really like that idea, you know, sending everything out to that list of other agents, you know, in the surrounding areas and the surrounding states that you have, because that's a great way to find you know, maybe uh, not only just having those referral partners, but getting the buyers from out of state that are looking to move, maybe buy a second yeah. property. I mean, on the on the beach there, I'd imagine you probably have some people that are looking for those vacation homes or Airbnb. So, I mean, that's a great Absolutely. way to get it. Yeah. And in the state of Rhode Island, um, I think it was like last year, I think 50% of the people that were over a million dollars were out of state. Um, so those are really important, you know, things to understand. So also like, because I'm licensed in Massachusetts, I also put it in the MLS over there. Not that it necessarily actually does matter because it goes directly to the agents. Um, So I always offer that as well. Like you can put it in both states and the MLS. Right. Absolutely. So kind of uh, moving from the lead generation side, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, you've you've talked and touched on a bit about, you know, building your team and and building your business uh, over the time. Uh, What, uh, you know, what have you been doing to, uh, to grow that, uh, you know, business build bigger and bigger? Um, Well, my first, I'm all about delegation. And I think it's very important for you as an individual to very, to look at yourself (laughs) <laughs> and look at the things that you're good at and the things that you're not good at, you know, the things that you don't like to do. So I was like, I was telling my client, I was like, um, you know, I, there's only like, everyone's only good at like three things. And she's like, what are those three things? I was like, I don't really know, but they're not more than three. Okay. <laughs> but one of them is like, I hate paperwork, you know, again, that high D, D like um, D I personality where we're people, be people, people, I guess. And um, just sitting down at a desk and doing the paperwork is just not um, what I like to do. And I realized, you know, on Friday nights when I would rather be spending time with my kids, I was sitting there writing up a purchase and sales agreement for like an hour. And it just wasn't what I wanted to do. I would rather be doing pretty much anything else. So hiring a transaction coordinator, I think is the key. Um, And I think that it's super important to even have that as a part of your team um, that, you know, especially with new agents, a lot of people say like, oh, it's very important for everybody to learn, you know, all the parts. And it's like, well, that's great. But like, why don't you get somebody who actually knows the parts and can sort of show you what the transaction is supposed to look like, how you're communicating with the attorneys, with everybody. So for me, um, my first hire was a transaction coordinator. Um, And then I have, um, and then I have just kind of sub in agents where um, they help me with, um, you know, showings, inspections, what have you. But I really wanted to be able to, you know, make the business not always about me. Um, And I think that that happened because um, when I was pregnant and then I had a C-section, I really realized like 
okay, I need some help. Like business can't stop just because I'm not available. And so, you know, being able to, I mean, to do that and to think about that is, is, and get yourself out of like, I am everything. I right. is like, you can't be, it's, right. it's not possible. <laughs> um, but I did, you know, I, I have started a team and failed at a team and um, I'm just kind of getting back to that place of, of really identifying like how I want to build it out. And so for me, it is um, definitely going to be more regional like for instance, I, you know, I have my license in New Jersey. So when I go down to New Jersey, I am with the, I'm with Sotheby's down there. And so something that like pulled me to them was that, you know, they always do open houses. People are always open to doing open houses. And I'm like, all right, awesome. So, you know, an hour, I talk to everybody coming in and then I send out my referrals. So I'm big on referrals for sure. Yeah, I like to have you on referrals. And also, when you're starting your business, I know everybody talks about like listings, listings, listings. And it's true. Like for me, I, um, I'm first a mom and um, my time with my kids is something that has always been um, what I wanted to preserve. Um, and, and so I knew that and I wanted to be home. I wanted to be like cooking dinner. At five, I didn't want to go out showing houses at five o'clock to all the buyers. So me, I mean, I'm like 95% listings. Um, And that's really where I focused my energy because I knew that number one, I'm in control of, you know, how much money I'm making. I'm in control of selling the property and I'm in control of my time. And, um, so I've always been like super heavy on listings and then also referrals as well out of state and state. Um, so, yeah. Right. And I want to ask you uh, about the uh, general contractors registration and what, you know, why you want to do that and what that is uh, going to do for your business. Yeah. So that was kind of the other thing I was like, all right, well, starting a business, it's like, how can I get like the most things? So I always say like, all right, well, there's many different ways to get listings. And so one of the ways that I not concocted, but, you know, I was like, all right, well, developers, contractors, they have multiple listings, you know? So, and I really wanted to, I really like to have relationships that are substantial and long-term and um and then be able to offer like my marketing crazy marketing ideas and services to um my developers and so one developer i worked on a development with them and it was a con- it was a multi unit that they converted into a condo which if you don't know is like pretty much the easiest thing to do you literally because it's you don't even have to go in front of zoning because there's enough parking space like they've allotted that building right. to have that many people in that space so you don't have to go in front of zoning so you just have to go to an attorney maybe spend like four to five thousand dollars to get it converted and if you know it's like well price per square foot on a multi versus price per square foot on a condo you're going to make more money on a condo. And so I just thought, well, you know, that's interesting. And then one of my clients, uh, one of my colleagues, he was like, why don't you just try to do one on your own? I'm like, you know what? Why not? (laughs) (laughs) So in Rhode Island, um, it's pretty pathetic, but it's only a four hour class that you have to take. Yep. And then you get insurance and then you're a contractor. So, um, But, you know, I feel like as me, it's like, all right, I'm the I'm the sales, I'm the marketing. And as long as I build a team around that, that um, that that's something that we'll do. But I haven't done it. I haven't like we haven't I'm registering. I have to finalize registering for February. Right. Awesome. And then my last question, and you've touched on it a couple of times about how much uh, how important family is and your kids and um, from you know, your, uh, social media pages, uh, it's very present, you know, the family life it's, you know, when you look at your, 
your Instagram page. It's not a whole lot of the, here's my listing photo with you know the stats of the house. It's a lot of you and your family, what you guys do around town. And I think that's a great way to interact with the community as well. It's I, well, it's just about being authentic. Like, I don't know. I believe a lot in like energy and just, you know, high vibrations, high frequency. And I feel like if you're doing what you love and you're authentic about that and you're bopping around with your kids, whether it's skiing, I mean, I was on this, I like, I went skiing by myself the other weekend and I, you know, of course it's like, all I talk about is real estate, but like people are like, Oh my God, do you have your car? And I'm like, Vermont. And I'm like, great. I got like two new referrals, you know, to send out. But I've incorporated my kids 100% into my real estate business. My daughter and son, I mean, my daughter, like when she was first born, cause it was like, you know, we had to just hit the ground running, but you know, two weeks out of the belly, we were like cl- showing houses, closing houses. She was vomiting in the back before we're going to closings, changing diapers, but it's just, you know, it's, it's really the only thing that matters because no one at the end of their life is going to be like, you know what? I wish I worked more like no. So if I get to work with my kids, like I remember telling my daughter one day, it was, you know, it was like a Saturday. I was, um, we were showing like um, a rental and I just said to her, I'm like, you know what, Isabella? I was like, it's really awesome that mommy, you know, gets that you wouldn't get to come with mommy to like, to go to work. A lot of mommies don't get to do that. And I'm like, well, that's because mommy's the boss. And she goes, <laughs> I'm the boss. <laughs> like, you're right. Actually, you're right. We do. We're more on your timeline than we are on mommies. But, you know, that's something else that you can do. It's, you know, I, um, my kids come to my open houses, they hand out flyers. My daughter gives them the phone to put their information in and you can pay your kids. Um, and then you can pay them. Like that was something also that it's super important is you could put your kids on payroll and then be able to, I think it's like they 12,000, don't quote me on this, $12,500 that you can pay them for the year. And then you can put, and then you can max out their IRA at $6,500 um, per year. So that is tax free money that you're taking off of your income, you know, but you're paying your kids and that money starts to make money. Um, and then a lot of people, a lot of, you know, hard money lenders, they lend out of their self-directed IRA. And so, you know, eventually at some point you can convert your Roth IRA to a self-directed IRA and you can lend money out of, that pot. So, you know, there's a lot of tax advantages um, as well. And I think it's just super important to to be able to invest in our kids. Um, but, you know, even like I bring my daughter, you know, we'll go to showings and we do the numbers on the lockbox, you know, and she, we count how many rooms there are. And I, you know, we're like, okay, the house is worth $550,000, you know, right. so, yeah, and yeah. I think it's I think it's great. You know, a lot of because a lot of people they do get into real estate to, you know, take that time back away from that nine to five that they maybe had and, you know, quickly find that maybe they aren't, you know, getting that time that they thought they would with your kids, but having, you know, what you're doing really incorporating them into your day to day business and just making sure that they're around all the time, I think helps with that, you know, keeping that eye on that that initial goal of wanting to make more family time and, and wanting to be, you know, home at five o'clock every day doing the dinners and things like that. Yeah. And I, I also feel like, you know, when they're young, like I have a three and a five year old and once your kid turns five, they go to kindergarten and they're gone right. all day. And so you really like, there's just like, there's five years that you have really before they like go off and they're their own little person. And, um, and, you know, for me, it was always just very important to to be the mom that's at the PTO meetings and be at the school and and um, and just be able to to do that. But also real estate allows you to financially, you know, be able to do that. You have to work. You know, I would get up at four in the morning um, to do my quiet time when nobody's <laughs> bothering me. But um, but you have to hustle it. It's not going to come to you. It's not going to come to you. And you have to be your own best advocate. And your own best marketer, um, because nobody else is going to do it for you. Yeah. Well, I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk with me today. It's uh, you know, it's awesome to hear. You know, you made it work. It 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 obviously in you know, those door knocking and going into a brand new place. It's obviously working for you. 
<laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I'm so I'm so appreciative to have um, been on your show. I really want to thank Meg for joining us today and think it's awesome that she was able to go into a brand new market and make a name for herself as a new agent. Remember, if you're interested in following her, I've included a link to her Instagram page in the episode description. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode, but remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.